Are you moving to the Portland area and looking for a nice house and a good neighborhood? Of course you are. Well, everybody's definition of nice is a little bit different. And in this video, we're going to talk about a very specific type of home in a very specific type of area. It's gonna lean a little bit more suburban, but this is a category that a lot of people relocating to the Portland metro area are looking for. We're gonna go through the metro area and look at neighborhoods and suburbs where you can get really, really nice homes for under a million dollars. Stay tuned to learn more. Hey, what's up everybody? This is Paul Clem, licensed broker with EXP Realty in Oregon and Washington. And in this video, we're going to talk about luxury homes in affordable areas, or rather homes that check a lot of boxes for a ton of people looking to move up, looking to move into a suburban area. Now there's a lot of places, a lot of towns and suburbs around Portland that are going to be really, really expensive. Across the board, there's a pretty big range in terms of affordability and what you can get where in the Portland metro area. So digging in this a little bit more we're going to talk about areas where uh, you can get four to five bedroom homes 2,500 to 4,000 square feet well-established big communities right so there's a lot of little one-off pockets where you can find this so we're going to talk about the areas where you're gonna you're gonna have the best chance to find this type of home now what your budget is and what affordability looks like obviously is relative to where you're coming from at least to some degree and for folks locally usually that 800,000 up to about a million mark is kind of uh, the, the the next pocket that people move it move up into uh, and again, you can get a, a pretty big range at that price point, but there's certain areas where you can really get good bang for your buck. Now we're talking again, big, nice homes built in the last 30 years in well-established communities. This type of home and, and the type of neighborhoods, the type of suburbs, the type of living you can get in the areas that we're going to talk about is definitely not for everybody. So if you're looking for closer in neighborhoods in Portland, a little more culture maybe, and a little more going on, a little more walkable, this video is probably not for you. I think I think some people will look at some of the prop, some of the areas and the homes in these areas that we'll talk about and kind of refer to them as like McMansions, right? But there's so many neighborhoods in Portland. There's a there's a style and type of suburb that you can get in Portland that really is very sought after. Even if the type of homes aren't exactly you know your, what you would want. You know, there's still a lot of very positive attributes about the areas that we'll talk about, but specifically, these are areas where under a million dollars, you can reliably get into a nice move up property. So let's check them out. Before we go any further, if this is your first time to the channel or you've been here and you haven't already, and you wanna get more videos like this, make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the little bell to get notified every time we drop a new video. And we've helped so many people relocate to Oregon and move to the Portland Metro area. And as licensed real estate professionals in the state of Oregon, we absolutely Absolutely love to help with that process. So if that is you, give us a call, send us a text, shoot us an email, or click the link down below in the description of the video. To schedule a Zoom call with us. Okay, I'm gonna try to get through these areas pretty quickly. I'll, uh, as I'm talking, show you uh, some driving footage, some walking, you know, footage of walking around, some drone footage of these areas. Um, I have a tendency to be a bit long-winded, and we actually have quite a few areas um, that I think, again, really provide that good bang for your buck. These are areas where it's pr they're pretty similar where you could be in one neighborhood or suburb uh, or the next one that I'll talk about or the next one and not really feel like you're in a completely different area. So let's jump right into it. So here we are, of course, uh, the Portland metro area. Most of what we're talking about is on the suburban west side of Portland. But okay, let's get started. So the first area that we're going to talk about is Bull Mountain. So Bull Mountain is basically in Tigard. Uh, Tigard is a suburb of Portland bordering Portland on the southwest side. Uh, very, very nice area by many measures. Uh, flies under the radar a little bit. Beaverton to the north, you know, is a little bit more of a popular destination or at least a place where people start looking first. But specifically Bull Mountain, which is actually unincorporated Washington County and not technically a part of Tigard City, uh, it's still going to be a Tigard address. You're feeding into Tigard Schools, Tigard Twalton School District, uh, but you are at elevation, right? So it's a mountain, Bull Mountain, and you can see kind of these winding, meandering streets, uh, you know, that climb elevation and then, you know, drop elevation on either side. Uh, cul-de-sacs, you know, it just has a very, very suburban feel. This was all developed in the last 30 years. Uh, this is an area 
This is an area that really, again, you can get a ton of bang for your buck. And that 800,000 to a million dollar mark uh, can really, really go a long way here. Again, you know, with all of these areas that we'll be talking about, four or five bedrooms, you know, probably with some kind of bonus room or office or both, you're not gonna get huge properties in here necessarily. You can get some older homes kind of smattered throughout here where you get like a third of an acre, but pretty dense, like a lot of the areas that we'll be looking at, smaller lots, so that is something Thing, you know that you can seed right away with Bull Mountain you know one of the downsides is that it's not super convenient to get up into Portland uh, so you can get up into Beaverton relatively easily uh, Tiger in and of itself really has everything thing you need in particular along this highway 99 corridor uh, so you can get to grocery stores and some entertainment some restaurants things like that but if you were moving to the Portland area and wanted to be close to Portland Bull Mountain is pretty buried down here on the southwest side of the of the metro area. All right, the next area that we'll talk about is northwest Washington County. So you may have heard of Bethany and Cedar Mill. Also Oak Hills is, is in this pocket too, but this is an older kind of mid-century development, super cool area, but doesn't really fall within what we're talking about here in this video. So starting with Cedar Mill, Bonnie Slope, Again, you can see the elevation change, uh, how wooded it is. So a lot of the areas that we're talking about have some hills and just a little more character in terms of the landscape. Uh, pretty densely wooded, a lot of parks, things like that. Just very green areas. Uh, so that is a common thread in a lot of the areas that we'll be talking about. Uh, but Cedar Mill is super cool because you're just into Washington County from Portland, so you're paying lower on your property taxes, but you have really quick, easy access into Portland, whether you go, go Highway 26, or you take Cornell, or you take Barnes up to Burnside, there's a lot of ways you can kind of backdoor into downtown. But you get up and over the hill, uh, you know, the, the West Hills here, and you drop into, again, a very suburban feeling area, has an upscale feel to it, like a lot of the areas that we're talking about. But Cedar Mill, Bonnie Slope, you're not necessarily paying uh, the same price tag, even as just over the county line into Northwest Heights or what is mostly Forest Heights uh, into Portland. So Cedar Mill, you actually have a Portland address. It's just unincorporated Washington County over here in Multnomah County, uh, just really a stone's throw from Cedar Mill. Your entry point here is more like 1.1, 1.2 million. So you just go just a hair west, uh, and you can, again, be in that 800000 to a $1 million uh, pocket. Now, this is an area that, uh, again, it's unincorporated, Washington County, Portland address, but you're in Beaverton schools. So it's going to feel, by and large, like you are in Beaverton to some degree. Northwest Portland a little bit, again, depending on how close you are to this Northwest Heights, Forest Heights area. But you're feeding into Sunset High School in here. And then up in Bethany, you're feeding into some Sunset High School and then some Westview High School. Uh, but Bethany is a little bit newer. It's a little bit further out, a little bit more of a bubble living up here. Um, you, you have grocery stores and everything that you would need, but you're going to have a harder time coming and going, getting out of Bethany, as opposed to Cedar Mill, where you can get down into Cedar Hills and downtown Beaverton very easily. Again, you can get into Portland very easily. Bethany still is you know, somewhat convenient. I mean, you can still get out to other places, but you're just that much further west. You know, you drop down, you're almost as far west as uh, Hillsborough or at least uh, kind of the eastern part of Hillsboro. You do have an area called Tannisbourne over here where you have a, a lot of commercial development. There's an outdoor open air mall here. There's a lot of restaurants and uh, you know, there's some things to do here in this Tannisbourne area if you were living in Bethany. Bethany and Cedar Mill are gonna be pretty comparable in terms of price ranges. Again, that 800,000 to a million dollar entry point is very, um, is very common. And of course, there are sections of this pocket in Northwest Washington County, um, you know, where you can get up into 1.3, 1.5, even 2 million. Okay, so Northwest Washington County, kind of unofficially Beaverton, uh, but let's talk about some areas of Beaverton proper. So just south of Highway 26 from Bethany is Five Oaks, and mostly this is a development called Waterhouse. Uh, so this is a really, really big HOA community, super nice area, very, you know, desirable, very sought after. You know, you're, you're right next to Highway 26. 
you're really close into Cedar Hills, so you can get to, get to Cedar Hills. Nike World Headquarters is right there. Uh, but this is an area, again, too, where you just have uh, an abundance of 3,000 square foot plus homes, four or five bedrooms, you know, homes with an office, bonus room. Um, a lot of properties in here have uh, decent sized yards, too. Uh, so the newer the construction, typically the smaller the yard generally. Uh, so a lot of this was built over the 90s. You know, they're still leaving a little bit of yard uh, in this area. So this development is called Waterhouse and Five Oaks is the neighborhood of Beaverton. So Five Oaks is an area where, yeah, you're a little bit further out from Portland. You're around 150th to 170th. Um, so, you know, that many blocks west of the river. But this is a, a, a very nice little pocket that uh, actually can be overlooked and has some really good entry points for move up properties. All right, next staying in Beaverton, we're gonna go all the way south in Beaverton to Sexton Mountain and to neighbor Southwest. So this Sexton Mountain corridor through here really flies under the radar. You know, and again, common theme here, you have some elevation, so you have some winding streets and just, again, a lot of character in terms of the landscape overall. You have a lot of trees, so it's densely wooded. It's very green. You have a lot of parks in this area, uh, a lot of cul-de-sacs, things like that. And a lot of this was developed from, you know, about the late 80s, 90s on. So you have newer homes, bigger homes in an area that, again, just feels really suburban. And for a lot of people, just checks a ton of those boxes. This is is also an area that's going to be pretty attainable in, in terms of the price range that you get. Uh, you know, you get in a neighbor southwest, you actually get some newer construction. You can see a lot of this vacant land out here around the new Mountainside High School, uh, which is a beautiful campus. This is an incredible high school. A lot of this vacant land out here actually looks different today. You know, we're, we're looking at the aerial map from Google and a lot of this is already developed and is continuing to be developed. So you can get some new construction out this way. Uh, but into kind of this Murray Hill area, you get a, you get a lot of this really nice suburban feeling uh, type neighborhoods where you can still get in under a million dollars. Down here, you're still, again, I mean, you're pretty far from Portland, so it's gonna be less convenient to get up into the city. Just like Bull Mountain, you can see where we started in Bull Mountain, the area that we're talking about now is just north of Bull Mountain. And you kinda of have to take these roads that have a ton of stoplights to get uh, you know, back toward Portland. So Shoals Ferry, for example, Highway 210 is kind of the corridor through here. You can take to Washington Square Mall. And then again, you can you know get up into Portland that way. Um, it's not like traffic is super bad uh, going that way to or from, but again, there's just a lot of stoplights and it's just more more buried out this way than you would be in other parts of the metro area. I would say too here, Sexton Mountain doesn't have as much around it in the way of entertainment necessarily. There's some stuff up and down Murray, uh, Murray Boulevard, but once you get in the neighbor Southwest and this Progress Ridge area, uh, you do have a couple of different little shopping commercial districts uh, where you have bars and restaurants and coffee shops and things like that, um, tap rooms and uh, movie theater, and uh, there's quite a bit to do. It's, it's really cool, and they've built it out really nicely, walking paths and trails and things like that. So this is an area that I think is really desirable for a lot of people, and if you don't mind being a little more out of town, could definitely be a good landing spot. Okay, we're gonna hop over to the east side here into Happy Valley. So Happy Valley is more developed in the last 10, 15 years. I think the, I think the median age of homes sold last year, maybe it was two years ago now, uh, or median year built was 2010. Uh, for homes sold. So it tells you uh, how much newer so many of the homes in this area are, but super nice area. I mean, it's it's really an equivalent of some of the areas that we've looked at and talked about on the west side, but it's probably bigger to some degree, more sprawling, and more consistent across the boards. So this is just complete suburbia out here. I think that you'll be able to find pretty similar pricing to areas that we talked about, like Northwest Washington County and Neighbor Southwest and Sexton Mountain and Beaverton, for example. Uh, but you can see, again, the hills, the elevation change. You can see the trees. It's very wooded. Now, the newer the construction, the less mature some of the landscaping in some of these communities. So a lot of these areas, you know, were just completely cleared out. And, you know, it isn't as, uh, again, mature in terms of landscaping. But this area has a lot of these really wooded uh, nature areas around it, like 
uh, like Scouters Mountain, for example, uh, you're already that much farther east out in Happy Valley uh, from the river. So you're that much closer to Mount Hood out here. So in Happy Valley, you, got, you get a lot of really nice Mount Hood views, which is great. Uh, it's a little bit more of a rural feel out here. So you get into, into this very suburban area and then it gets very rural very quickly the further east you go. You get some of that on the west side too. The further west you go, the more you get out into like wine country and things like that. Uh, so there are some similarities there. But there's more cities, more development overall on the west side uh, than what you get in Happy Valley. Again, this is just, you know, really complete suburbia with a ton of consistency anywhere you go. Okay, last but not least, at least la last alphabetically, we're going to talk about Tualatin. So Tualatin is right on this I-5 corridor, mostly on the west side of the freeway. And then you get a little bit up here on the east side of the freeway and then at least a third maybe almost half of Tualatin is this uh, commercial kind of industrial area so this is all just like big manufacturing warehouses things like that distributing centers uh, but there's a, a pretty like but there's a pretty clear distinction uh, or dividing line in Tualatin between this commercial zone and all the residential area and you can see, again, just like a lot of the areas that we looked at, you know, very wooded. It's more like rolling hills in here. It's a little flatter than some of the areas that we looked at, like Sexton Mountain and Happy Valley and in northwest Washington County. But there are some rolling hills. Uh, still a really cool, interesting landscape in here. Very wooded. Uh, Tualatin was really developed over the 80s, 90s, into the uh, early 2000s. Uh, it's still developing quite a bit on the south side here. So there's some new construction going on. I actually have a house under contract here in this autumn sunrise area in here uh, but most of Tualatin you know from kind of the town center south and east into here is uh, pretty densely developed at this point but Tualatin has a ton of great parks um, the communities or the neighborhoods rather have walking trails and paths uh, and it, and you know this is very uh, you know suburbia uh, like a lot of the areas that we've talked about Tualatin and Happy Valley have a very similar feel I've always felt but you know you can even feel like you're in Bull Mountain, or you might feel like you're in Neighbor Southwest or in Cedar Mill or Bethany, just on a given street in Tualatin. Again, if we're looking at kind of the average age of home, average size, and in this case, and for the sake of this video, looking at the average price range. Again, with so much that's attainable under a million dollars in all of these areas that we've talked about. Now, the areas that we've talked about have probably the largest contiguous area uh, of just that suburban feeling, you know, type uh, neighborhood or suburb that, that we've been talking about. There are some other areas, well, there's plenty of areas really where there's one-off developments and things like that all throughout the Portland metro area that are going to be, again, you know, you can get in at under a million. Uh, but obviously Hillsboro, you know, if we're going to talk about some honorable mentions, Hill Hillsboro is the, the largest uh, suburb on the west side, you know, has a lot of different neighborhoods uh, with different fields, age, things like that. A lot of Hillsboro was actually developed in the 60s and 70s, and there are some newer developments, but it's denser, it's flatter. Uh, a lot of the newer developments built in the last 30 years have a bigger range, so you have more 1,500, 1,800 square foot homes uh, in neighborhoods, again, that were built uh, more recently. You don't get that as much in some of the areas that we were talking about, but Hillsboro is going to have a lot of good options, too, where you can get in at under a million dollars. Similarly, Sherwood and Wilsonville, too. You know, these are the next two honorable mention. Uh, Sherwood, Wilsonville, kind of connected to Tualatin. This area all through here is really pretty similar with Wilsonville and Sherwood being developed more recently than Tualatin. Uh, but Wilsonville, you know, it's got some of these business parks. It's got some of these big master plan communities. Um, super nice. And again, you, you can get in for under a million, but you can just see these areas aren't as big. Um, it's a little more of a rural suburban feel, similar with Sherwood, more of a rural suburban feeling area as opposed to being a little bit closer into Portland, like everything else that we talked about. But Sherwood, beautiful area, very interesting landscape. You know, there's a really cool old town, downtown area. 
you know there are some newer neighborhoods again nice big homes that you can get for uh, you know under a million dollars but uh, I would say because they're further out maybe because the landscape isn't as interesting or because they're just not quite as big or have as again as much contiguous consistent suburban areas you know these just fall on the honorable mention list okay so if you are thinking about moving to portland if you want to talk more about the areas we discussed in this video if you want to talk about areas that are similar or if you have something completely different in mind either way give us a call send us a text shoot us an email or click the link down below in the description of the video schedule a zoom call with us and we can talk more about your budget your timeline your needs your wants all of that and put together a game plan for you if this video is helpful make sure to hit the like button that helps us out a lot if you want to get more videos like this make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the little bell to get notified every time we drop a new video as always really appreciate you watching until next time we'll talk to you later